Well, hello. It has been a long time since I've filmed anything, and I figured it was uh, time to update everyone and uh, get the camera out. So, oh, where do I start? Um, my commitment in the north is over, so I actually transferred from Yellowknife Northwest Territories to Vancouver Island on Canada's west coast in British Columbia. Uh, about a month ago actually and I'm working here now so I'm super close to the boat and Devlin still has some work commitments so she's still up there working we've just rented a room off some friends and uh, she'll be doing some house sitting so for the next uh, while that's what we're gonna have to do but uh, yeah we'll be back together full-time soon enough uh, when we figure that out and that gives me a chance to do some things on the boat, get it ready for us for cruising. Uh, I need to maybe address, uh, there might be a leak in the forward water tank, uh, only when it's really full. Uh, so I gotta pull the floor up for that and I replace the shower uh, sump pump for the basin. Uh, so there's a few things to address. I've just spent the last month organizing uh, since we haven't been on the boat much. Uh, just getting stuff off the boat that didn't need to be on the boat. And, yeah, just getting reacquainted with Northern Dancer. I started doing some cleaning on the top sides. Uh, I was on the cabin top, I actually used a wet sand method, and then a rubbing compound, a cut polish, and a wax. And it's make, making the gel coat look actually like uh, brand new in some places, so uh, that's been fun to do. And I've been doing some gel coat repair as well, where there's chips and gouges. And yeah, 43 year old gel coat that looks uh, almost brand new. So that's been fun. I've also completed uh, just yesterday one side of the boat, the, the port side hull. And I, that, I just did a rubbing compound, uh, cut polish and wax. But it's a lot of work when you got to do it three times, <laughs> a lot of surface area. Now that I've, you know, we've had the boat for two years, two and a half years actually. Um, and uh, we've been on it a number of times, and in the last month I've been on it a lot. I thought it might be uh, good to do a little more detailed, updated boat tour uh, for everyone. And I'm planning to go out maybe next week just for a night or two. So it's going to be a lot of little trips like that for now. So I could film those if you guys want. Um, it's not going to be too exciting, but it's always fun to get the camera out and uh, make some little short films for you. I mentioned she's a 1979 Hans Christian 43. Uh, she's 43 feet on deck and 52 feet length overall. Uh, there's a, about a 7 foot bowsprit and then a, a pulpit on the back. It's a few feet. Uh, 13 feet 8 inches for the beam. She's a catch rig with a cutter uh, set up on the front. The draft is uh, 6 feet 9 inches. It's full keel. And the displacement of the boat is 48,000 pounds. And just the keel weighs 18,000 pounds. So which is about 3,000 pounds more than the entire weight of our CNC 34 that we had. So a little more to handle and uh, maneuver, but there is a really good bow thruster on the boat that was installed by the previous owners, so that's uh, been a blessing in the tight quarters and marinas and uh, really makes it the, the boat more maneuverable. Um, what else? A fairly new engine. It's a Yanmar four-cylinder, I can't remember the model, but about 76 horsepower, turbo diesel, uh, 16 valve just purrs, uh, about 1200 hours on it. And there's super easy access to the engine, which I'll show you after. Uh, what else? Well, why don't I just do a little tour? Uh, maybe you've seen the old one, but uh, this will give you an idea of uh, what we've got on board. And if you missed the old last one, then you get to see it now. Well, I figured the easiest way to do this would be with the GoPro. Uh, just the other camera is a little more limited on exposure settings and 
Uh, it's the DSLR, so... Anyways, we'll do the GoPro with a bit of a wide angle, so things might look a little distorted, but it gives you the idea of what we've got here. And we'll start at the companion way, and as I mentioned, the rig set up on here is a catch, so we have a main mast and a mizzen mast, which is just outside the companionway doors. So the center line of our boat is actually right here, and the companionway is offset to starboard. In behind uh, the stairs, which are removable of course, I've got a light there, uh, we have our electrical panel. That was all uh, upgraded since we bought the boat. And just below we have access to uh, shut off valves and things like that for the fuel tanks. And there's a little handy light for when we first come in. This is also backlit. Um, not sure if you can see that, but at nighttime it backlights the labels. And at the aft of the boat we have two quarter berths or staterooms and on port we have a double and on starboard a single so on port which is on the right hand side on your screen because uh, we're looking backwards is the double and it's the uh, larger of the two you can see it goes back quite far uh, all these port lights that you see um, they all open in the cabin, so lots of ventilation. There's a little hanging locker and storage under the seat, storage under the bed, of course. And uh, yeah, a large, like plenty of room for two people. On starboard, we have uh, the single, and right now I'm just using it as storage, basically. But, and the light burnt out the other day, so I haven't replaced that yet. But yeah, it's a it's a really large single, um, very wide actually. But not quite enough room in here to change uh, if you're uh, wanting to do that. But at least you have the door that closes for privacy. And then there's a hanging locker as well, and storage under the bed, of course. And all these doors, you know, they're handcrafted, you can tell, uh, built in a shipyard, and they're solid Burmese teak. Everything in the cabin is solid teak. And uh, there's no laminate on the boat, which is kind of still wrapping my head around that, all the teak on this boat. Of course, this uh, stateroom has a door as well, so you can close that. And we can go a little forward on port, and this is our galley. So as you can see, it's a lot larger than what we had on Moonshine, which was just a little corner of the, the boat. But uh, yeah, it's a big wrap around. We have a double sink and pressurized hot and cold water. This is a, a hand pump, and this is a hand pump, and they both are disconnected at the moment, but they are for like salt water hand pump and uh, fresh water hand pump. This little spigot here, this is probably another pump, but there's I don't know where the, the pumper is for it, but this little spigot here, that's a, the tank overflow. So we carry 500 liters of water, and uh, if you over fill the tanks, it'll spill out into the sink. Uh, we have refrigeration on the right and freezer on the left. It's actually just the cold plates here, and then there's a divider, and there's holes, so things freeze on this side, but they only stay cold on this side. And there's two levels in this. Um, you can't really tell, but there's a this plexiglass level, uh, shelf in there with holes in it and that gives you another level of depth and I can't even reach the bottom um, it's so deep 
on the freezer side it's a little shallower but it does have two levels but uh, because of the curve of the hull it doesn't go quite down as far but I make ice in there every day so it's definitely uh, cold enough I'll turn on the light here we've got uh, some organizers for plates large and small and of course storage storage more storage down in here uh, we've got our a propane alarm and a solenoid we have a tank tender I did a video on that a while ago um, it, it does four readings we have two water tanks and two fuel tanks we carry uh, 470 liters of fuel and we've got a propane stove a three burner with an oven it's the same stove I had on moonshine on our CNC 34 for so many years uh, before I upgraded so we're back to that older stove but it works great um, lots of cupboards or drawers more drawers and uh, cupboards here so lots of storage and I mentioned the port lights open in the the bedroom there and they also open everywhere in the salon and galley on both sides and under the galley under the sink is where the engine is I mentioned it's a I think a 2009 Yanmar diesel and maybe I'll just uh, open these uh, doors they all these just pop off here here and here and then actually the front seat of the salon opens up as well. So there I've pulled the three uh, walls off. It, it, they're really easy, they just latch on and off. And you can see all the access we have for this engine. There's even an engine room light. So lots of room to uh, work on it and access. And here we are again looking at the galley on port. If you go directly across to starboard, we have our nav station. Of course, there's storage under the seat, in the table, and under the table in that cupboard. I know some boats have a aft facing nav station, and I've always preferred forward facing, so we're lucky that that's what we have on this boat. From there, if we move forward on the starboard side, we have what we're using as a bit of a pantry and a shelf and more storage above it. And then continuing on starboard, uh, we have bookshelves and a long settee. Of course, storage in behind and underneath. And if I pan across to the port side, we have a bit of a wraparound salon and it's backed up against the galley. This first section here is the section that can be removed uh, to access the front of the engine. And you can see we're just that is in relation to where we just were looking at the engine. You can see there's a lot of light in here. I'll show you in a minute. There's a large butterfly hatch right above the salon. First, just over here, behind the wraparound, we have a sea berth. My daughter slept there one night, so there's enough room for a smaller person to sleep there. But you could do it in a pinch. Of course, there's storage underneath. And uh, right where those blankets are in the far left of the sea berth, that is where our hot water tank is. And then we have... a uh, additional reservoir for coolant for our engine and uh, more to the right of the sea berth underneath we have a new charger uh, inverter under the seat in the wraparound we have two 8D batteries and a starter battery and then we have two more 8D batteries up under the V berth 
and they give us a total of over 1100 amp hours. They're about 176 pounds each battery. So not ones you want to be moving around very often. And then we have a water pump system under there. And again, at the very left here is access to the engine. Uh, now we're facing the wrong way, <laughs> looking back, so we'll turn around. Oh, I'll show you that butterfly hatch. So that's an opening hatch that lets a ton of light in here and also a lot of ventilation when it's open. And there's just one more look at the butterfly hatch from the nav station area. And I don't think I've missed anything. I probably have, but uh, can't think of it right now. If we go forward to the uh, what we'd, we'd call the forward bulkhead, I guess, uh, we have a, it's a fab all diesel wall furnace. I haven't actually used it yet, but it, it should work well. And on starboard, we have a hanging locker. Uh, the V-berth door is open, so you can just see part of that. And a drawer underneath. And on port, we have the head. We'll take a look at that. It's a fairly large head with a big skylight above it and it doesn't have a separate shower but there's a lot of room in here and on the ceiling there's actually a track so you can run the shower curtain around and then there's a hook up here that you just put the shower head into and you should be able to keep most of the, the head dry so just need to get a shower curtain but it's a fairly large head, so it should be easy to shower in. Um, I haven't yet, but it's always probably not showing it very well on camera that it is a decent size, but I have to take my word for it. And then uh, we just go a little more forward, and I just got stuff in here right now. But this is the V-Birth, of course. And just a bunch of clothes and if you go to the very bow we have access to the chain locker very large shelves on either side much wider than what we had on our CNC 34 and then we walk back and into the salon and galley and nav station companionway And that's our Hans Christian 43 down below. Well, hopefully that gave you a better idea of what the interior of our Hans Christian uh, looks like. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention, I know, uh, we have a hydronic S-bar heating system as well as the Fabol wall furnace, which the S-bar also runs on diesel, and a hydronic means it, it heats up a coolant, it runs the coolant through uh, to different little heat exchangers, and then you can independently run those with the fans. So we have a double one in the salon, and it's been like 0 degrees Celsius out and 20, 22 degrees inside when I'm running that. So it really heats up the boat well. We have another heat exchanger in the uh, head, so we can run a, 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 it in there as well. Again, we don't have to have them both on at the same time, but we can decide what we want on. And we have a third one that vents out into the uh, cockpit. We have a full enclosure on, our, uh, on this boat, and we had one on our last boat, and we really liked it because it really extends your cruising season, it extends your living space, uh, especially on those rainy days on the, the west coast of Canada. So, that's nice. I tried it last April, uh, well, a year ago, and uh, a year over a year ago, and it was really nice on a chilly night to have that running up there, because I was running it down here anyways. So, um, the top sides, uh, starting at the 
uh, bow of the boat, we have about a seven foot bowsprit, which is a really nice feature and uh, just adds to the look of this boat, <laughs> I think. And, I sh and it has practical purposes as well, obviously. Um, if you come back a little, we have a big windlass. It's all chain. We carry about 400 feet of chain and a 66 pound Bruce on the bow. And then we uh, go back a little further. There's a opening hatch in the V-berth, adds a lot of light. Uh, so that's really nice to have and ventilation. Uh, just behind that, there's a, a trunk, a teak trunk that's affixed to the deck. And that has a 38 pound uh, propane tank, which fuels the uh, stove and oven. I'm going to switch that out to a two tank system, uh, smaller tanks. So if we run out of uh, fuel, it's not like this giant tank is empty and we're stuck with no fuel. Maybe have two 20 pound tanks or 17 pound tanks, whatever will fit. And then I can swap them out when one gets empty, just swap it over. So obviously that makes a little more sense to have that. Uh, so I'll do that once I've run the propane out of this one. If you go back a little further, we have uh, a life raft. It's long, long overdue for servicing, so we may or may not be able to uh, keep that. But we have the mount for it that's already there. So uh, we don't need a life raft for sure, like on the coast here, but we'll probably get one. And if we have offshore uh, plans at some point, then it's nice to have that, obviously, or a must. You go back a little further, and then there's the butterfly hatch which I showed you from below here. And uh, yeah, it's a nice feature and it's super practical for lighting and ventilation as well. Then a little further back again, and it's the full enclosure. So uh, super nice feature to have. And yeah, in the summertime, we don't use it all the windows and close it up as much, but uh, in the off season, that's when it really <laughs> shines in, in the benefits of having it. Um, this boat, I've given all the specs already. Uh, it's a double ender. I think there's canoe stern and double ender. And I think a canoe stern is a boat that has the rudder hanging off the stern. Correct me if I'm wrong. And a double ender is one that the rudder hangs under the water off the keel. Uh, that way instead. Uh, so I think ours is a double ender. And the canoe stern is the one with the rudder off the the back, I think. Let me know in the comments if uh, if I'm backwards on that or not, or if there's a difference. Uh, what else? I think I've covered most of the top sides now. Uh, our mast height clearance is 67 feet, so it's a pretty tall rig on the main. And then the mizzen obviously is uh, a lot smaller. And yeah, I think that's all I can think of for the, the tour. It was probably fairly quick, but gives you a good idea, hopefully, of what we have downstairs and a little bit of a look on the top side. We'll be doing a lot more cruising uh, more often, so if you guys want me to film that, I will. And it's uh, great to be back on the coast. And the North has been an was an amazing experience, and uh, don't regret it at all. Living up just below the Arctic Circle and m minus fifty seven was our coldest last winter in Celsius. Uh, but yeah, I'm ready to be back on the water more and cruising more and boat life more. So uh, stay tuned.